Ever wondered about the difference between RS-232 and RS-485 data cables? Well, you're in the right place. These are not just random assortments of letters and numbers, but standards for data cables. These standards are established by organizations like the Electronic Industry Association, or EIA, and the Telecommunication Industries Association, or TIA. By setting these standards, they ensure compatibility between devices from different manufacturers, allowing for smooth data transfer over long distances and at improved rates. Now, when we talk about data transfer, it's broadly classified into two categories, single-ended and differential. The RS-232, launched way back in 1962, was designed for single-ended data transfer. Despite its limitations, it's still in use today. On the other hand, RS-485 caters to the need for differential data transmission, providing superior performance in certain situations. So, why do we need different standards like RS-232 and RS-485? Let's dive into their evolution to find out. Back in 1962, we saw the launch of RS-232, designed for single-ended data transfer. This standard proudly served its purpose but was eventually found lacking, especially when it came to speed and distance. Its speed was capped at 20,000 bits per second, and it only covered distances up to 50 feet. Not exactly the stuff of dreams for a rapidly advancing technological world, right? As the need for faster data transfer and greater distances grew, the limitations of single-ended data transfer became glaringly apparent. That's when differential data transmission stepped into the spotlight. This method offered superior performance, negating the effects of ground shifts and induced noise signals on a network. This led to the emergence of RS-422, a standard that seemed promising. However, it was soon discovered that RS-422 fell short in creating a true multi-point network. That's where RS-485 made its grand entry. Designed to meet the demands of a truly multi-point network, RS-485 was a game-changer. It specified not just one or two, but up to 32 drivers and 32 receivers on a single bus. What's more, RS-485 drivers were capable of handling data collision and bus fault conditions. In essence, RS-485 was the evolution the networking world needed. That's how we've evolved from RS-232 to RS-485. But how do they really differ in their specifications? Let's find out. There are many differences between RS-232 and RS-485, but the main one is in their signaling mode. This variation in signaling mode is what sets the stage for a series of distinctions between the two standards. To start with, RS-232 operates in a single-ended mode which means it uses one signal wire and a common ground to transmit data. While this works perfectly fine for short distances and slower speeds, problems arise when you try to push the boundaries. Noise, ground shifts, and impedance mismatches can quickly become a thorn in the side of any network engineer trying to maintain a smooth data transfer. On the other hand, RS-485 operates in a differential mode this means it uses two wires to carry the data signals. This setup allows it to negate the effects of ground shifts and noise, providing a more reliable data transmission over longer distances and at faster rates. The balancing act of RS-485 is what gives it the edge in challenging data transfer scenarios. But the differences don't stop at the signaling mode. RS-485 can also handle data collision and bus fault conditions, something that RS-232 is not equipped to deal with. In a network, data collision occurs when two devices attempt to send data at the same time, while a bus fault condition happens when there's a disruption in the normal flow of data. With RS-485, these potential roadblocks are taken care of, ensuring that your data transfer remains smooth and uninterrupted. Another notable distinction is in the number of devices they can support. RS-232 can handle a one-to-one -one device configuration, which limits its use in larger networks. RS-485, however, is a different story. It can support up to 32 drivers and 32 receivers on a single bus, making it a far more flexible choice for complex networks. Let's not forget about the data transfer, speed, and distance. 
RS-232 allows for data transfer at relatively slow speeds of up to 20,000 bits per second and short distances of up to 50 feet. RS-485, however, can handle faster data transfer rates and longer distances, proving its worth in larger, more demanding networks. And that, dear audience, is the difference between RS-232 and RS-485. Now, the next time you come across these terms, you'll know exactly what they mean.